click the bell icon to turn on notifications. 9-8, write off bad debt. In this module, I'm gonna show you how to write off bad debt from customers. Let's imagine that you're looking at the accounts receivable aging summary and you identify some debt you're never gonna collect and that you want to write it off as bad debt. Let's assume this 1198.80 from Matt Everett is money we're never gonna collect. Let's go ahead and write that off. What I wanna do is keep track of the amount of money I've written off as bad debt. There's a couple ways we can go about writing this off. Let me start by showing you how to write off the bad debt and to put that in its own category on the chart of accounts and specifically the profit and loss. In the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna click on the gear. Under the column for list, I'm gonna click on products and services. In the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna click on new to create a new product or service. In this example, I'm gonna call it a service. The service name is gonna be a bad debt. The service description will just be writing off bad debt. You can make the service description anything you want it to be. This is entirely for you. The income account is gonna be, well, an income, but basically a, a contra income or an undoing of an income. I'm gonna click on the add new at the top of my list. It is an income account, but I'm gonna call it bad debt. What you'll see when we get to the profit and loss is we're doing this so we can keep track of the bad debt. But we wanna know specifically how much we've had to write off over the course of a year. By default, I'm gonna make this not taxable. For your business, it might be taxable by default. I'm gonna choose save and close. Now I've set up this product or service so that I can use it on my invoices. I'm then gonna to go to plus new in the upper right hand corner. I'm gonna create a credit memo. Credit memo for Matt. I'll make it today's date. For the product or service, I'm gonna choose bad debt. The amount is going to be eleven ninety eight eighty, and then I'm going to choose save and close. When I refresh my AR aging report, when I look at Matt's account, I can still see the eleven ninety eight eighty is sitting here as unpaid. It's because I need to connect my credit memo with my outstanding invoice. Let's go ahead and do that by clicking on plus new in the upper left hand corner. Let's go to customers and then go to receive payment. We're gonna find Matt. I can see my very first invoice is my oldest invoice. I can see it was due a little over a year ago. I can see the open balance is 1198.80. If I scroll down, I can select the box to the left of the credit memo. And I can say I would like to apply this credit memo to this invoice. And I can verify in the upper right hand corner that I'm not indicating that I'm collecting any new money. I'm literally just applying the credit memo. I'll go ahead and click save and close. Now when I look at the ER aging summary, that 1198 is no longer outstanding. Let's go ahead and look at its customer profile so you can see it there. So here's my credit memo. It's closed, it's been applied. Let me show you the profit and loss. I want you to see why we created an account called bad debt. When I look at this, I can see that there's a bad debt, a negative income, right? Which is essentially what it was. I had income, I had to write it off. I have $41,000 worth of income and $1,000 worth of bad debt. My total income is 40,000. Let me show you what's happening behind the scenes just in case you're curious. I'm gonna click on the total of 40,000. I'm then gonna come up here where it says group by, and I'll just say group by name, and then run report. If I come down to Matt, I can see all of my invoices for Matt, including the invoices that were written off as part of this 1198. What you might notice is there isn't an invoice for 1198, and that's because it was an invoice for a larger amount that he started making payments on, but never fully paid off, and then we just wrote off the balance. There's a handful of other ways you can do this. Let me go ahead and delete this credit memo and I'll show you some other options. So I'm gonna go more and delete and delete yes. So now the credit memo is gone. He has that outstanding balance. Let's imagine you don't want it to tie to a bad debt account, but rather you wanna keep track of the actual revenue for any given category. And bad debt is clearly not a category that had revenue to start with. You would need to figure out what the original account was. 
So we'll go to invoicing and then we'll go to customers. We'll go to Matt. I'm going to sort this by date to get the old stuff on top. Here's the invoice with 1198 outstanding. I'm going to go ahead and click on this line. I can see that it was consulting. So I can do the same thing I did earlier. Instead of using the product or service called bad debt, I can use the product or service called consulting. So I can go here and go to credit memo. I can choose Matt. I can choose consulting. 1198, make it untaxable. And the rest of it like you've already seen. I'm going to click cancel because I think you know what to do there. I'm going to show you one last approach. This approach I don't like, but it might be useful if the invoice is recent. You can find the invoice that has an outstanding balance. And you can do a couple of things. You can type in consulting here. You can enter a negative 1198.80, which then makes your balance do $0. You can replace the word consulting with the word bad debt. The negative 1198.80 makes your balance do $0. Your other option, if you'd prefer, is you can come down here where it says discount percent and change it to say discount value. And you can say my discount value is 1198.80. And that makes your balance do $0. So it's just a handful of ways of approaching this problem. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get a free QuickBooks Online Essential Keyboard Shortcuts infographic, click over there. And click over there to watch more QuickBooks videos from Simon Says It.